So when we were preparing for this event, we had to, I had to ask a friend of mine, and she's the one who helped me to, you know, go to all these places and get these things. So we went and got the drinks, and after getting the drinks, we came to this venue here and checked it out, and then we decided, no, you know what, because we want a stage like this, we need to get some, like a centerpiece of some sort that we are going to put there. And that's why the stage, you know, lights up today because of this one thing. And we decided, no, we're going to go to Rosebank. And it was around four o'clock, half past four at the time. Went to Rosebank, got to Rosebank, went to Mr. Price's home. So we looked around and we looked around and we looked around. We didn't find, didn't get what we're looking for. We decided, no, we're going to look for this thing some other time. Went to grab ice cream and we were talking. And before we knew it, it was dark. And in the dark, we decided, okay, let's, let's, let's go home now because it's, just get, it's getting dark. Got into the car. We drove, she had to drop me by the bus stop. Those who have been vet students, they know the, 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 the Rosebank bus stop where vets buses take students. And we just passed the bus stop a bit. And we sat in the car to finish our conversation. And while we're sitting, and I say to her, please turn off the lights. This car will not start when you have to go. And guess what she said? She didn't listen. <laughs> she didn't listen. She said, no, it's going to take about six hours for, this, for the battery to die. I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, I'm glad, Slee, you didn't listen. <laughs> because if she listened, I wouldn't have a speech for today. <laughs> but I'm really glad um, because that mistake has become a life lesson for me. And you can now imagine what happened. A few minutes later, we had to leave. I had to go to the bus stop and she had to continue with her journey. But then now, she tries to start a car, it doesn't start. For some odd reason, we had parked the car in front of a gate. And there came a man with a 1400 wants to get in. And I had to push the car by myself. <laughs> so I pushed the car, <laughs> I, push, I pushed the car for a distance, put it in a safe place. And now we needed to get help because we were stuck, right? Have you ever been stuck? Have you ever been in a situation where you feel like your life is not moving, it's not going anywhere? You are stuck. And it's really amazing that when we get stuck, it's always in the dark. So at Rosberg, we got stuck in the dark. And we had to go out and ask people to help us. And this is what happens in our lives. When you get stuck, everything gets dark. And you tend not to see where you're going. Everything gets dark and you're even scared to get out of that position where you are. Because you don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, we had to go our separate ways. The Zulu part of me... <laughs> why are people laughing? The Zulu part of me said, you know what, you told her. <laughs> you could just get out of the car, get into the bus and go straight to bed. But the Christian part of me was like, no, chief, do the right thing. <laughs> and because I'm a good Christian, I listened. Okay, that part of the story is not really true. I just put it in there to make a particular point. That at some, sometimes in life, you get people who will be with you when you are still rolling. But when you get stuck, they're gone. They are with you when you have something that you can still give to them. She had a car that would take me to all the places where I wanted to go. But now that the battery had died in the car, the Zulu guy was like, no, Jeev, you said it. She should have listened. And that sometimes happens in our lives. When we get stuck, people leave us. And when we get stuck, we find ourselves, sometimes it's not that people leave us, but we isolate ourselves from the people. So what we needed, we needed jumper cables. And unfortunately, she didn't have them in the car. And we had to leave the car there. And sometimes that's the big problem for many of us. We get comfortable in our stuck position. We never get out of the car to ask for help. 
Because we have accepted that, you know, we are stuck. What can I do? We got out and started asking people, Uber drivers, we asked, do you have jumper cables? No, we don't have jumper cables. Do you have jumper cables? We don't have jumper cables. Do you have jumper cables? We don't have jumper cables. We asked the Uber drivers, we asked people who had nice cars, beautiful cars, and they didn't want to help us. And some of them actually believed they had jumper cables. They just didn't want to help us. Or they thought they were not safe when they, when they help us. And that's sometimes what happens in our lives. You go around and you go to the people that you think they have what you need to get you started. And they are the ones who will tell you, no, we don't have it. Others promise that we will be with you, we will help you, we will get you where you want to be. But when it is time for them to deliver, they are not there. Right? And that's the pain of being stuck. Because the people who have their cars rolling, they never think that at some point in their lives, at some point of their journey, they might also get stuck. And I asked myself when I, I reflected on this, why do we get stuck in life? Why do we get stuck? And looking at this story, we got stuck because we spent the energy, the battery power on what the car is not supposed to do. The car is supposed to take us from one point to another. It is not a sitting room where people catch up. Right? And this is what happens in our lives. A lot of us are seeing people doing things and we want to do those things that people do. And we waste our energies, we waste our times, we waste our strengths, we waste our talents on things that we're not created to do. And that is why we get stuck. And some of us, it's not that we do not have battery power. It is not that we don't have the passion. It's not that we don't have that thing. It is because we need somebody who will turn the key and ignite the engine in the car. It is because we have thought that the people who left us are the only ones who are able to turn the key and start the car. And we are bitter about the, the fathers who never raised us. We are bitter about the mothers who left us. We are bitter about the friends who were not there when we needed them the most. And we are stuck. And the sad part of it is that they are continuing with their lives. The cars that passed us by and never wanted to help us they were continuing with their journeys and they got where they went or where they were going, but we're stuck. So were we supposed to just stay in the car and not go anywhere and not do anything? No. We kept on asking until this other guy <laughs> with a green old um, Toyota Corolla, he just pulled up in the garage and, you know, I was like, okay, let me just ask this guy. <laughs> I'm like, Chief, do you have jumper cables? And he said, no, I don't have jumper cables, but I know where, they are, where you can get them. <laughs> Go to the security guards in the mall, and they keep jumper cables. It was people we never expected that they had what we needed. And there are people that you dismiss in your life because you think they don't have what you need. And you go to those ones who look like they have what you need but they actually don't have and sometimes they, even if they do have they're not willing to give it to you we went to the security guards and we asked them for jumper cables they gave us jumper cables surprisingly the guy was still waiting for us there outside to jump start our car it is amazing and you know when i when i looked at his car i was like okay i think i know the reason why this guy didn't leave us I think this guy, looking at his car, I can tell that at some point in his journey, he got stuck. <laughs> and, and he knows what it feels like to be stuck. He knows what it feels like, because just by the look of his car, I could just tell that this one at some point, it got stuck. And he knows what it feels like to be stuck. And that is why he waited for us to go to the security guards and come back so they can jumpstart our car. And there are people like that in our lives. I love to say, a lot of people can tell you that you can do it. 
But only those who have done it will tell you how to do it. Because everyone can tell you that, no, Chief, you need jumper cables. Go get jumper cables. But the people who have been in that situation, they will know where to get them and they will know how to jump start the car. Right? The people who have been where you are, they will know the feeling of being stuck. They will know the feeling of not knowing what to do. And they will tell you how it's done. And today, I want to introduce to you our jumper cables. This is exactly what the book is. We have all been stuck in life. 